You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. This episode is brought to you by Palo Alto Networks, the leader in cybersecurity. As AI-driven attacks increase, organizations can't afford to have network security that's stuck in the past. Discover how Palo Alto Networks can help you predict what's coming and proactively secure against it with a zero-trust, AI-powered network security platform built to secure whatever, whenever, wherever. To learn more, visit paloaltonetworks.com slash network security platform. The U.S. healthcare sector struggles to recover from a cyber attack. Russia listens in via WebEx. The former head of NCSC calls for a ransomware payment ban. An Indian content farm mimics legitimate online news sites. The FTC reminds landlords that algorithmic price fixing is illegal. FCC employees are targeted by a phishing campaign. Experts weigh in on NIST's updated cybersecurity framework. Police shut down the largest German-speaking cybercrime market. Guest Mike Hanley, chief security officer and senior vice president of engineering at GitHub, shares insights with Ann Johnson, host of the Afternoon Cyber Tea Podcast. And celebrating the most inspiring women in cyber. It's Monday, March 4th, 2024. I'm Dave Bittner, and this is your CyberWire Intel Briefing. The cybersecurity incident that struck Change Healthcare on February 21st has sent shockwaves through the U.S. healthcare system, as a subsidiary of the conglomerate United Health Group, Change Healthcare occupies a linchpin position in the healthcare sector, processing over 15 billion claims annually for services worth in excess of $1.5 trillion. The company's role as the principal electronic clearinghouse connects a wide array of healthcare providers with insurance firms, facilitating the payment process for medical services rendered and determining patient liabilities. This cyber attack, characterized by officials as one of the most consequential in U.S. healthcare history, has exposed a critical vulnerability within the system. The disruption has precipitated a cascade of operational challenges for healthcare entities reliant on change healthcare services. Hospitals, pharmacies, and millions of patients have found themselves grappling with immediate repercussions of halted healthcare claims processing and payment flows. In response to the unfolding crisis, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has intervened, advocating for the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services to expedite payments to the affected healthcare providers. The cyber attack was executed by the Black Cat ransomware gang and involved the theft of patient data and the encryption of company files with a ransom demanded for their release. Change Healthcare's response included shutting down most of its network to contain the breach and initiating recovery efforts. The full impact of the attack is still unfolding, with the severity varying across different healthcare organizations based on their reliance on the compromised systems. Efforts to mitigate the impact have included the establishment of temporary financial assistance programs and manual processing of claims, However, these measures are seen as stopgaps rather than solutions, highlighting the broader challenges of cybersecurity resilience within the healthcare sector. This incident serves as a stark reminder of the vulnerabilities inherent in centralized digital healthcare infrastructures and the necessity for robust cybersecurity measures to safeguard against such attacks in the future. Russia has exploited vulnerabilities in Germany's communication security using an intercepted conversation from WebEx to stir divisions within Germany over its support for Ukraine. 
The 38-minute discussion involved Bundeswehr officials, including the head of the German Air Force, deliberating on supplying Ukraine with Taurus cruise missiles, a proposal that is not without controversy in Germany. The leak, orchestrated by RT editor and sanctioned propagandist Margarita Simonian, exposes the security lapses in using non-secure platforms for sensitive military communications. Germany's defense ministry acknowledges the interception, but questions the authenticity of the circulated content. In an article in The Times UK, former chief executive of GCHQ's National Cybersecurity Center, Kieran Martin, calls for an outright international ban on ransomware payments. Martin criticizes the UK's lenient stance on ransomware, contrasting it with the strict no-ransom policies for terrorism by British and American leaders. The article argues against the fear of increased underground activities after a ban, citing successful suppression of leaked data by law enforcement in the Metabank hack. It suggests that while governments can leverage state resources to combat ransomware, private entities lack such capacities, necessitating a supportive framework for victims before implementing a ban. The piece concludes by emphasizing the urgency of addressing ransomware, which Martin says is the most significant cyber threat to businesses. Bleeping Computer has uncovered a content farm in India operating over 60 domains mimicking reputable media outlets like the BBC, CNN, and Forbes without proper attribution. These copycat sites are part of a scheme to bolster SEO for online gambling and sell expensive advertorial slots under the guise of legitimate media. They repost articles verbatim from credible sources. The operation also spams forums to enhance SEO and offers advertorial placements for up to $1,000. Despite maintaining a facade of legitimacy through Google News registration and social media presence, the network's activities raise concerns over potential misuse for spreading disinformation. The operation has been linked to a gambling company. With rent prices soaring since 2020, particularly for lower-income consumers, the use of pricing software by landlords to set rent for millions of apartments has raised concerns over potential collusion and market manipulation. The FTC and the Department of Justice have taken a stance against algorithmic collusion, specifically in the residential housing market, emphasizing that using algorithms for price fixing is still illegal. Their joint legal brief clarifies that antitrust laws apply to algorithmic pricing strategies just as they would to traditional forms of price fixing. The agencies highlight that agreements to use such algorithms for pricing, even with some discretion retained by parties or instances of noncompliance, are unlawful. The brief warns businesses across all sectors that employing algorithms for collusive practices is illegal and under scrutiny by federal agencies, aiming to protect consumers and ensure fair competition. Cybersecurity firm Lookout has identified a sophisticated phishing attack targeting FCC employees and users of cryptocurrency platforms, utilizing a novel phishing kit to mimic single sign-on pages and deceive victims into disclosing login details. The attack involves emails, SMS, and voice phishing to trick individuals into providing sensitive information like passwords, MFA tokens, and photo IDs. The phishing kit, capable of impersonating brands such as Binance and Coinbase, has successfully compromised over 100 victims, mainly in the U.S., by creating fake websites that closely resemble legitimate services. Lookout suggests the campaign might be conducted by a group distinct from but inspired by the known threat actor Scattered Spider. Following the recent release of NIST's Cybersecurity Framework 2.0, Security Week gathered feedback from industry experts who recognize its advancements while highlighting areas needing further development. Experts appreciate the inclusion of Govern as a new pillar, emphasizing the importance of governance in cybersecurity risk management. 
They commend the updated framework for broadening its applicability across different organization sizes and sectors, particularly noting its alignment with the growing challenges of third-party risk management. However, they also point out gaps, such as the need for more focus on risk transfer mechanisms and cyber risk quantification to facilitate comprehensive risk management strategies. Some feedback calls for a stronger emphasis on emerging technologies like generative AI and a more nuanced approach to address the complexities of modern cyber environments, including hybrid work and the use of software-as-a-service applications. While acknowledging the framework's progress, experts suggest that NIST could further refine the framework by incorporating detailed guidance on managing supply chain cyber risk and enhancing the framework's adaptability to evolve cybersecurity landscapes. The Dusseldorf police in Germany have dismantled Crime Market, the largest German-speaking cybercrime market, arresting six individuals, including one key operator. The platform, with over 180,000 users, facilitated illegal trade in drugs, narcotics, and cybercrime services, alongside offering crime-related tutorials. This crackdown involved executing 102 search warrants across Germany and seizing evidence like cell phones, IT devices, narcotics, and almost 600,000 euros in cash and assets. The operation, which began showing effects earlier in the week with users reporting login issues, was part of a Europe-wide coordinated effort to target both the operators and users of Crime Market. Despite the site's homepage remaining online, a seizure notice now appears on other pages, indicating law enforcement's long-term monitoring and data confiscation efforts. Coming up after the break, Ann Johnson from the Afternoon Cyber Tea Podcast speaks with Mike Hanley, Chief Security Officer and Senior Vice President of Engineering at GitHub. Stay with us. Hey, everybody. I want to take a few minutes here and talk about our sponsor, Splunk. You know, you need to keep operations humming around the clock, but potential disruptions are everywhere. Splunk helps you predict problems and find and fix issues fast so you can reduce risk and ditch downtime. The world's largest enterprises rely on Splunk's unified security and observability platform to become more efficient, resilient, and innovative. With Splunk, you can react quickly, evolve faster, and be ready for anything. Stay ahead of disruptions. Learn more at Splunk.com slash resilience. Imagine a world where you're always one step ahead of cyber threats, where your defenses are impenetrable because you see what others don't. Welcome to Team Cymru's Threat Intelligence Solutions, With real-time access to the world's largest threat intelligence data ocean, they enable you to turn the tables on attackers. Transform your security from reactive to proactive through accelerated threat hunting and incident response, made possible through automation. Empower your team with visibility and insights to start defending your organization like never before. Team Cymru. Be the hunter, not the hunted. Learn more at team-cumry.com slash cyberwire. That's team-cymru.com slash cyberwire. Ann Johnson is host of Microsoft's Afternoon Cyber Tea Podcast. In this segment from a recent episode, she speaks with Mike Hanley, Chief Security Officer and Senior Vice President of Engineering at GitHub. Today I am joined by Mike Hanley, who is the Chief Security Officer and the Senior Vice President of Engineering at GitHub. Prior to GitHub, Mike was the Vice President of Security at Duo Security, where he built and led security research, development, and operations functions. After Duo's acquisition by Cisco, Mike led the transformation of Cisco's cloud security framework and later served as the Chief Information Security Officer for Cisco. Mike has also spent several years at CERT CC, 
as a senior member of the technical staff and security researcher focused on applied R&D programs for the U.S. Department of Defense and the intelligence community. Welcome to Afternoon Cyber Team, Mike. Thank you, Anne. It's great to be here with you. So at GitHub, you're in this really unique role. Greg and I were talking about it. Greg's the producer of the podcast, uh, for those of you who don't know who Greg is. But we were talking about this as we were thinking about you as a guest, because you're both the executive overleading security, but you're also the executive overleading engineering. And in most companies, those responsibilities are split. But as we shift left, it makes a lot of sense, right? Bringing together security and engineering is important today. It's becoming even more important for those two functions to be in lockstep. Can you talk a little bit about your role and your perspective about the intersection of security and engineering? And do you think we're going to see more of that in the coming years in leadership roles? Gosh, I hope so, Anne. I hope this becomes a trend and takes off. And I'll talk a little bit about why that is. First, it's worth noting, when I came to GitHub, it was originally just to be the chief security officer at the company. So I took on the security program. We had the opportunity to, to take some amazing people, some amazing capabilities, technologies, and really just invest heavily in expanding that to support Really, what we see is the opportunity for GitHub to have a massively positive impact on the broader ecosystem, right? I think our mission is a little unique in that it's not just keeping GitHub secure and making sure that we build secure products. It's really there's a third pillar to that, which is having an immensely positive impact on the security of developers, particularly in open source, but also commercial developers by making it easy for them to get to good security outcomes. So we have some great functions there like GitHub Security Lab, for example, that are just doing amazing work out in open source. But the role expanded for me a little over a year and a half ago when the opportunity came up to lead GitHub Engineering all up as well and bring those two teams together. And I think it's been very consistent with a thesis that we have, which is security really does start with the developer. And we hear things like build security in, not bolting it on, or we hear things about starting with security. And really what we're saying there is we want to make it easy for developers who are building the technology that's part of our daily lives to be secure at the furthest point left in the life cycle. Well, for the CISOs, the chief security officers, the security leaders listening in, the engineering leaders who listen to the podcast, I think most will agree with everything you said. There's also this huge need to improve the software development life cycle to ensure that software and code is secure from the very start. So the leaders I talk to get often tripped up on the how. They ask me questions like, how do I maintain the productivity of my engineers while enabling them to build more secure software? Or how do I skill or upskill the devs that were not trained in security? I'm curious about what mental models that you use when you think about these challenges, what strategies you've put in place. How do you recommend security and engineering leaders think about it? And how do you think AI is going to change all of that? Yeah, I would start by saying, first off, I think as a security leader, when you have to wrestle with some of these hard questions, the most important thing to remember is that you're running security, but you're really one of the company operators, first and foremost. And you're trying to figure out how do I employ the resources, the authority, the remit, the mandate that I have as the person who's responsible for security in such a way where it serves the business's objectives, which includes risk management and like not having a bad time from a security perspective. But it also includes shipping products. It includes closing the books and finance on time. It includes making sure that people can access HR systems when they need to. And that I would basically summarize as you want to shift the thinking of the security team and function from being the department of no to the department of yes and. And anytime somebody comes to me and says, hey, we want to do this, like we think this is important to, let's just say it's the finance team. I find that when you start a conversation with yes and, and the and is followed by how can we do that safely? How can we do that in such a way where it protects customer information? How do we make sure that's consistent with our security and compliance needs as a company? How do we do that while protecting our employees and our intellectual property? the conversation is very different from when you just say no. <laughs> in fact, often when you say no, that's a conversation killer, not a conversation starter. And it gives you, I think, as a security leader, an opportunity to learn more about what the business is trying to accomplish. And I think when you have that mindset and you're trusting your counterparts and your peers in other parts of the organization, that they know what's best for finance, for marketing, for sales. And you can bring your expertise to bear on security to meet them in the middle and find a solution that works for everybody. Be sure to check out the Afternoon Cyber Tea Podcast right here on the N2K CyberWire Podcast Network or wherever you get your podcasts.
Managing the requirements for modern security programs is increasingly challenging and time-consuming. Enter Vanta. Vanta gives you one place to centralize and scale your security program, quickly assess risk, streamline security reviews, and automate compliance for ISO 27001, SOC 2, and more. You can leverage Vanta's market-leading trust management platform to unify risk management and secure the trust of your customers. Plus, use Vanta AI to save time when completing security questionnaires. CyberWire daily listeners can get $1,000 off by going to vanta.com slash cyber. That's V-A-N-T-A dot com slash cyber. And finally, last week, the Most Inspiring Women in Cyber Awards for 2024 were held at BT Tower in London, honoring 20 women for their contributions to cybersecurity. Organized by Eskensi PR and sponsored by companies like BT and Think Cybersecurity Limited, the event recognized achievements in closing the gender gap and mentoring in the sector. The ceremony, celebrated globally and live-streamed, also acknowledged five ones to watch and a cyber marketer of the year. Over 100 candidates were evaluated by an esteemed panel of judges from the industry. The awards underscored the importance of diversity and inclusion for effective cybersecurity, with speakers highlighting the role of women's achievements and the need for continued support and visibility for women at all career stages. The event was lauded as a significant industry moment to champion women in cybersecurity. Bravo to all the winners. And that's the Cyberwire. For links to all of today's stories, check out our daily briefing at thecyberwire.com. Don't forget to check out the Grumpy Old Geeks podcast, where I contribute to a regular segment on Jason and Brian's show every week. You can find Grumpy Old Geeks where all the fine podcasts are listed. We'd love to know what you think of this podcast. You can email us at cyberwire at n2k.com. We're privileged that N2K and podcasts like The Cyberwire are part of the daily intelligence routine of many of the most influential leaders and operators in the public and private sector, as well as the critical security teams supporting the Fortune 500 and many of the world's preeminent intelligence and law enforcement agencies. N2K Strategic Workforce Intelligence optimizes the value of your biggest investment, your people. We make you smarter about your team while making your team smarter. Learn more at n2k.com. This episode was produced by Liz Stokes. Our mixer is Trey Hester with original music by Elliot Peltzman. Our executive producers are Jennifer Iben and Brandon Karp. Our executive editor is Peter Kilpie, and I'm Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening. We'll see you back here tomorrow. This episode is made possible in part by RSA Conference, where the world talks security. Through global events and year-round content, RSAC connects you to cybersecurity leaders and cutting-edge ideas for a safer, more secure future. Learn more at rsaconference.com slash cyberwire23.